it's been a long time in the planning, folks, hasn't it? The legendary Ypres rally has eventually arrived, and I can't wait for the rally to start. But it's going to be a cracker, isn't it? We've got three days of rally action. Listen, Ypres normally is about 300 kilometres, and that's what we've got this week. 295 kilometres, round about 200 miles in total. Normally in Ypres, we start on Friday evening, we finish Saturday night, bit of a marathon almost, right through the night, really late stages. More of a traditional look to this one though. Starts at lunchtime on Friday with the opening day of the rally. A lot of the famous iconic stages of Ypres on Friday and Saturday. 135 k's on Friday, 120 k's around Ypres on Saturday. And then on Sunday, well, we move to the other side of Belgium. We go all the way east to the Spa Formula One circuit where we, well, we have a little blast around there and we have a little blast around the linking roads. 40 odd kilometres for the final day. It is going to be interesting, that's for sure. Always nice to go somewhere a little bit different. Not convinced about going to Spa, but listen, more than likely I'll be proved wrong and it'll be a fantastic spectacle. But what do we expect to see this week? Well, the rally is going to be won and lost for sure on the stages around the town of Ypres here. And I've been out and I've had a little look at them today. And there are one or two things that look a little different. Take a look at this on the right. That's a field of corn, something we don't normally see during Ypres Rally. Now, it's the Lankamark stage, it's the shakedown stage. You're too fast into this corner here, this left-hander, and you go off into the corn. You could be lost forever in there. Genuinely, I think it could be an issue. If you went into there in a rally car, how are you going to find your way out? Yeah, listen, you know, I mean, they do go in there. They're not going to get lost. They're not going to get lost. They'll find their way out eventually. But it's a reasonably serious point. You know, uh, during Ypres Rally, at its normal slot in the calendar, uh, you don't get fields of corn like that. You know, we've got corn, we've got barley, we've got, well, what else have I seen out there today? I've seen potatoes, I've seen Brussels sprouts, I've seen all sorts out in the fields. A lot of that might have been harvested in the last couple of weeks, but because of the torrential rain that we've seen in this part of the world, well, it hasn't been harvested. So, you know, those fields are looking all a little bit full. Full, is that a word? Well, it is a word, but is it a description to use? You know what I mean. They look unharvested, don't they? And, yeah, it won't cause too many problems. But, you know, there's a lot of moisture in that soil around those crops. A lot of moisture in the ditches, in the cuts. And even although we're expecting some really good weather in the lead-up to the rally, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday, the ground is saturated. They've had, as I'm sure you've all seen, some horrendous weather in this part of the world over the last few weeks. So, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see. Now, I mentioned those cuts. They are going to be interesting. They're always a defining part of the Ypres rally. And when I was out earlier today, I came across a couple of them. Here's what I thought of them. So this is one of those typical cuts here in Ypres. It's the opening stage of the rally. It's a fastest right-hander towards the end of the stage. And as you can see, there's a cut here to be taken now. The big question is how much of a cut are you going to take as the driver? Well, the wreck he's been through, and you can tell where it's muddy here. The majority of the drivers have just taken maybe half of the cut that's available. You might ask yourself why. Well, as you can see, if you look in here, maybe one or two of the drivers have had a little look thinking, actually, fastest line is over this side, closer to the field. Well, well, here we go. There's the line. Mmm, that's, uh, well, that's stepping down a little bit. If I were to be brave enough to go a little further to my left and disappear into a ditch, and that is the issue here in Ypres. There are lots of cuts to be taken, but you've got to know where the jeopardy lies. The jeopardy lies deep in those ditches. So, yeah, you know, you've got to be aware. You've really got to be aware of the cut, how far you can go. You can nibble, you can nibble, you can nibble a little more. And then the next car along nibbles a little bit too much, bang. They're off the road. And it's not just, you know, the cuts that you've got to look out for here. I, you know, the rally is, if you like, the character of the rally is, is, is very much defined by the type of road, by the, the countryside that those roads run through. And along the side of these roads, because remember the roads connect little villages, little settlements, little hamlets and farms. And there are all sorts of communications poles along the side. And they're not wooden poles, they're concrete poles. 
as I found out. Well, this is a really nice section for you to have a look at. It's an S-bend, reasonably fast S-bend, and as you can see, a slightly innocuous cut. Although, as we've already seen, many rope cuts here are innocuous. It is innocuous-ish. I might have made that word up. Left-hand cut, but what else is waiting for the drivers? There's even more jeopardy just on the exit of that corner. What can you see? So these, the concrete telegraph poles, have to be treated with the greatest of respect. You've come around the S-Bend carrying perhaps a little too much speed. The car drifts wide. You're using all of the road. Bang! You clip one of these immovable objects. Now, over the years, these concrete pillars have claimed more victims in Ypres than the ditches ever have. So yeah, the ditches and the poles, two things to look out for this week at Ypres Rally. Uh, you know, having had a look today, what do I think about road position? Well, I do think road position is going to play a big part in the outcome of this event. It is drying quickly, but as I said earlier, the ground is very much saturated and it'll take a lot for that to dry out completely. Sebastian Ogier on the first day will have an advantage. It will rather rapidly deteriorate and become polluted. Craig Breen with his position on the road, hmm, you'd kind of fancy him. Remember, he's won this rally before. Only two drivers to have competed here before. Well, it's Craig Breen and it's Thierry Neuville, both of whom have won the event. Neuville's got a decent road position. Craig Breen, not such a good starting position. I think that Craig Breen could go well here, but he's going to have to take some risks. He's going to have to push on. He's going to have to trust his car, particularly in those cuts, particularly on those exits up the cuts where it could be rather slippy. Ogier, though, has to be the man to watch this weekend, other than Neuville. Neuville will use his knowledge. He's done the event nine times, ten times, something like that. He knows his way around here. Ogier has never been, but you know what? Whenever we go to a new event, Ogier is quick. And we saw that, didn't we, in Croatia? Ogier and... Obviously, Elvin Evans were very, very quick there. Can they be as quick here? Well, you know, I, I think they can. I genuinely think they can. But I do believe that they will have to go some to get ahead of those two Hyundais that I've mentioned. I didn't mention Oik Tanak. It'll be very interesting to see how Oik Tanak goes here. Can he find a little more pace? Last time on tarmac, it wasn't there. This time it could be there. But again, a little bit further down the start order, might struggle a wee bit. We'll have to wait and see, folks. But whatever happens here, it is going to be a great weekend. That is absolutely for sure. We are expecting to see some good weather. We're expecting to see some great driving. We're expecting to see some absolute world-class competition on the stages here in Ypres.